Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to evaluate the integral of this rational function here with a repeated irreducible quadratic factor in the denominator. Let's get started. We know already that we can already write the partial fraction decomposition of this one because the numerator has degree 4 and the denominator has degree 5. So this is a proper rational function. So make sure that your rational function is a proper rational function before you do partial fraction decomposition. And we learned already how to set up the form of the partial fraction decomposition for this uh, rational function. And we have here, so for that factor x in the denominator, we'll have the fraction a over x. And for this repeated irreducible quadratic factor, we have a corresponding uh, two fractions. So we start with a power 1 and then the one with the power 2. So we have here, again, the numerator should be linear. So bx plus c over x squared plus 1. And then plus another linear here, so a dx plus e all over the quantity x squared plus 1 squared. And then, of course, dx. Now, how do we find the values of these constants, a, b, c, d, e? So let's look at uh, first at the uh, partial fraction uh, decomposition. So that one and then uh, this uh, expression here. Now we can use a cover-up technique to find the value of a. And a is just equal to the value of the rational function without the x in the denominator. So we have here x squared plus 1 quantity squared. And we plug in the value of x that will make this 0. So that is x equals 0. And we'll get here 1 over 1 squared, so 1 over 1, which is just equal to 1. Now, how do we find the values of B, C, D, and E? Are we going to set up four linear equations with these four unknowns, B, C, D, E? Well, I think that's a long way to find the values of B, C, D, and E. Now, what's another strategy in finding these constants? Note here that we don't have a real value of x that will make this denominator equal to 0. But there is actually a complex number that will make this denominator equal to 0. And what is that a complex number? So we can have here x equals i or x equals negative i. So actually here, we can also use cover-up technique by plugging in a complex number into x. But of course, you have to use that complex number that will make this denominator equal to 0. And you may choose i or negative i. So how do we use a cover-up technique by plugging in a complex number? So again, we evaluate the dx plus e. It's the numerator of this fraction at x equals i. It's the value of x that will make the denominator equal to 0. And this is equal to our rational function covering the x squared plus 1 quantity squared in the denominator. So we have here x cubed minus x plus 1 all over x. And then evaluated at that value of x, x equal to i. So we're only doing here cover-up technique, but we're using a complex number for x. So the left-hand side here will be a di and then plus e equal to the right-hand side, which is uh, 2 times i raised to 4, which is just equal to 1. And then minus uh, i cube is just equal to negative i. And then minus i, and then plus 1 all over i, which is equal to 3 over i. And writing this in standard form, we multiply it by i over i. We'll get here uh, 3i over negative 1, which is equal to negative uh, 3i. Now, because uh, these uh, two complex numbers here are equal, so the real parts and imaginary parts should be equal. So in this case, D must be equal to negative 3. And E, since we don't have a real part on the right-hand side, so we have here equal to 0. Now we're left with determining the values of B and C. And in my previous video, I discussed uh, two ways to find that values B and C the standard method that is taught in the classroom, and a safe technique in finding these values. So if you're interested in learning that safe technique, then click the information icon on the upper right corner of this video. 
So in this video, let's just find the values of B and C by just plugging in some values of X. So here we can already use any value of X other than X equals zero. So let's choose X equals one. So if we plug in X equals one into our rational function, we'll get here a two minus one minus one plus one. So that is equal to one. And then over the denominator will be one plus two quantity squared. So that is four. So that is one fourth. Now, if we plug in x equals one into this expression, we'll get here in the first term a over one. So that is just a, but we know already the value of a. So that is equal to one. And then plus our numerator in the second fraction will be b plus c all over one squared plus one. So that is over two. And then plus, we have there d times 1, but d is negative 3. Negative 3 times 1, so that is just negative 3. And then plus e, e is equal to 0. So that is just plus 0 all over 1 plus 1 quantity squared, so that is equal to 4. So now 1 plus negative 3 fourths is just equal to 1 fourth. And we also have 1 fourth on the left-hand side of the equation. So we'll get there b plus c all over 2 equals 0, which is the same thing as 0 equal to b plus c. So we obtained here one equation that involves b and c. Now we plug in another value for x. Let's say x equals negative 1. So if we plug in x equals negative 1 here, we'll get there uh, 2 and then plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So that is equal to uh, 5 over the denominator will be negative 1 and this is uh, positive 2 squared. So that is negative 4 equal to so again we replace this a by 1 and then x by negative 1 so 1 over negative 1 so that is negative 1 and then plus so b times negative 1 so that is negative b and then plus c all over negative 1 squared so that is 1 plus 1 so that is all over 2 and then plus d times x so negative 3 times negative 1 is a 3 and then plus e so again plus 0 all over 4 now, negative 1 plus 3 fourths is equal to negative 1 fourth. So if we move this to the left-hand side, we'll get there negative 5 fourths plus 1 fourth. So that is just negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1, which is equal to negative b plus c all over 2. So this will give us negative 2 equal to negative b plus c. So this is our second equation. And we can already find the value of C by just adding the two equations, equation 1 plus equation 2. And we'll get here negative 2 equal to 2C, which gives C equal to negative 1. And since the sum of B and C is equal to 0, so we know that B is equal to 1. Let's now plug in the values of the constants A, B, C, D, and E here. So we'll have here A is equal to 1, B and C. So you have there 1 and negative 1. So that is X minus 1. And then D is negative 3. So negative 3X plus 0. So that is just minus 3X. Let's now evaluate this uh, integral here. So we know already an antiderivative of 1 over X. So that is just ln of absolute value of X. And to find an antiderivative of this, we split it into uh, two fractions. We'll get here plus uh, integral of, uh, we have here uh, 2x over x squared plus 1, and then dx, because we want to use uh, u substitution in this case. So this is just our du, and then our denominator is our u. But we want to have an equivalent expression for this one, x over x squared plus 1. So we have a 2 here, so we have to multiply this by 1 half. And then we still have there the minus integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And we can already evaluate that one. And uh, the last uh, fraction is just equal to, so we can write it as uh, x squared plus 1 raised to negative 2. Again, we want to use uh, u substitution. So that is times uh, 2x dx. And then integral of this and make it equal to the integral of this one. So we have to multiply that by 3 over 2. So we can now evaluate the three integrals. So we'll get here ln of absolute value of x plus one half integral of du over u. So that is ln of absolute value of x squared plus one. And we may remove the absolute value bars. And then minus uh, 
tangent inverse or arctan of x. And then minus 3 halves integral of u raised to negative 2 du, which is just equal to add 1 to the power, divided by the new power. And then don't forget the plus c. And we can simplify our answer by writing this expression as plus 3 over 2x squared plus 2. Okay, I hope that you learned something new in this video. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.